so. So, uh, who's excited to see tonight's guests? Oh, who's just pleased to be indoors out of the rain? Yay! <laughs> it's been terrible, hasn't it? Oh, incredible thunderstorms this week. Just 65,000 lightning strikes over the south of England. I mean, the bad weather even took Britain's Got Talent off the air for five minutes. <gasps> five minutes. It's affected the voting. It's possible they might not have a winner to send to this year's Royal Variety Show. Here's hoping. <laughs> <laughs> now, all that thunder and lightning, I mean, there was so much banging and flashing, I thought, Love Island had already started again. <laughs> <laughs> banging and flashing, yeah. <laughs> Congestion's been announced for the new series next week. Now, here, this, <laughs> this is an extraordinary fact for you, ladies and gentlemen. More people applied to be a contestant on this year's Love Island than applied to go to Oxford and Cambridge universities combined. <laughs> <laughs> oh, modern Britain. <laughs> Still, one of the contestants is an A&E doctor. Good thinking, having someone on the island who has access to penicillin. <laughs> and, talking of smug, fake, tanned, egotistical sex pests, Donald Trump <laughs> has had another busy week. He finally had his long-awaited meeting with Kim. No, not Kim Jong-un. No, Kim Kardashian. <laughs> There she is in the Oval Office, the woman with the world's most famous arse. <laughs> no. Uh, now, Trump... Trump loves Kim Kardashian. You know, one more K, she'd have his favorite initials. <laughs> meeting, they did the normal kind of small talk, you know. Kim asked Trump if he had a favorite bar. He said, yes, Roseanne. <laughs> <laughs> At the meeting, they talked about Kim's latest campaign for prison reform. She highlighted the case of one poor immigrant woman who has been kept prisoner for years and has no chance of ever being set free. <laughs> Winning actor, critically acclaimed writer, and one of our best loved comedians. Now she's turned film star in The More You Ignore Me. It's our friend, Joe Brand! Hey! Hey! Oh. <laughs> he's the breakout star of the Hobbit films and the epic BBC series Poldock. Now he's heading to the West End with the Lieutenant of Inish Moore. Please welcome Aiden Turner, everybody! For 30 years, this man has starred in classic films like Dead Poets Society, Reality Bites, Training Day, and Boyhood. Now he's giving a standout performance in the new drama First Reformed. It's a first time welcome to the great Ethan Hawke, everyone! Yeah! That's for you! For you! Thank you for having me. Love to see you. Have a seat. Golden Globe winning actor shot the fame in the iconic Muriel's wedding. Since then, she starred in Sixth Sense, About a Boy, Little Miss Sunshine. Now she's terrifying us in new horror hereditary. It's a warm welcome back to Tony Collette. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Have a seat, too. You. You, oh, lo lovely. Hello, everybody. Hello, Hi. Good evening. Uh, welcome back, Hello. Joe. It's been a while, Joe. And Graham, it's been a long time. It has. And Tony, you've been ma many times, but welcome. I, I can actually recount how many times I've done this show. It's just a blur. You try to blank <laughs> them out. You learn this, Ethan and Aiden. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, Ethan, Ethan, though, that you've done this extraordinary range of films, uh, but apparently you know if someone comes up to you the <laughs> film that they like. Well, I can have a, a kind of general guess. You know, like my my kids' mothers generally like Reality Bites. You know, they had their my picture up in their locker in high school and <laughs> things like that. Um, 
There's a certain geek that always likes Gattaca. Of course, you know? yes. There's a, a certain earnestness in the eyes of a Dead Poet Society lover. <laughs> a certain toughness to a, a Training Day fan. Yo, Jake, where's the money? <laughs> uh, uh, you can kind of you feel them out as they approach. Because the shouting out thing is so weird. I mean, you've talked on this show before about uh, the mural's wedding thing, and because it's now it's nearly twenty five. Apparently so. Yeah. Okay. Well, shut, shut up. Okay. No, not yeah. at all. It is. It's yeah. a long time ago. I'm, people, that character is still so dear to so many people, and they want to talk about it. And it's a lovely, lovely thing. But I do get your terrible mural quite often. Still. Still. They still <laughs> shout out. Yeah. That is bonkers, isn't it? A little bit. It's yeah. kind of lovely. It, means it meant something to them. Yes. Because, uh, Joe, you must get uh, sort of recognised all the time. Well, I do, but mainly negative. No, I say that. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, also in the weirdest of places, have, having a smear. Uh, sorry, but, yeah, I know. And this young doctor was, like, down the business end, and he said, don't I recognise you? <laughs> <laughs> Which end are you talking about? <laughs> to be recognised. It is. It is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Aidan Turner, obviously you're in the Hobbit films and you're about to start the fourth season of Poldark. Uh, so, now, a lot of Poldark fans watching, should we just, like, ripping a Band-Aid off? Should we just do it? Should we just see it? I have no idea what you're talking Here about. Here it is. There we go. <laughs> We've seen it. It's over. Is it, though? Is it really no, over? No, you're not going to see it again. That's it. It's done. <laughs> <laughs> But now, you would think everyone... How could you not like that photograph? But apparently not everyone is a fan of that photograph. I was not a fan of it. And what I heard, isn't there an organisation that... Well, they weren't a fan of the, the technique on the day that I used oh, in, the, okay. in the actual show. We had the chairman of the Scything Association or something showed up to show me how to do it. Uh, what were you actually doing? Well, it's scything, so it's a bit like golf or putting. You just kind of do this. I but thought there's no drama in that, so I just get in, stuck into it, and and, and was it the chairman of the Scything Association was there? So, I think so. Yeah. With his busy schedule, I mean that's extraordinary. <laughs> 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 and, and was he giving you notes? He was giving me notes, yeah, but I didn't take him, and, uh, <laughs> and he was he was really disappointed, and he left in a bit of a huff, I think. Yeah. Oh no! What a yeah. rebel! You weren't yeah. taking your Scything seriously. No, no, I wasn't. I think it's I did something all right. to work on in the future. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. Yeah. Come on, probably just annoyed about the top off. You weren't taking it seriously. Sure, yeah. Right. <laughs> Keep showing. There me. she blows. <laughs> so you're not going to do that with me, are you? Imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Naked lawn mowing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, lots of great things to talk about tonight. And we begin with a film that will... I mean, it really will just scare the bejesus out of you. It's uh, Tony Collette in Hereditary. It's currently playing at the London Sundance Film Festival and opens nationwide then on the 15th of June. Tell us uh, about it. Tell us who you play and uh, what happens before you get really frightened. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's kind of... My, I play this woman whose mother has died. She didn't have a good relationship with her. And um, after she dies, she has a kind of an awakening, and you associate awakenings with some kind of positive kind of change in life. Uh, but there is nothing positive about what she <laughs> finds out. Her entire life has been manipulated by this woman. There is massive betrayal and all kinds of elements, and it just it goes from bad to worse. But it, it is so suspenseful, and it's, oh. it looks amazing. Um, and Ari Aster, who made the film, it's his first feature. He is such an incredible talent, and I feel kind of chuffed that he chose me to be part of his first film, because I really think he's going to have an amazing career. OK, brace yourselves. Here's a taste of what to expect. Oh. <laughs> Scary as that is, I'm smiling because is that the is that the, the trail that got shown in a cinema in Australia? If it's not that one, it is very similar. <laughs> um, there, there is a story about a bunch of parents who took their kids to see Peter Rabbit in Western Australia. <laughs> <laughs> and as they're sitting there with their popcorn and their ice creams, they start to play the trailers, and lo and behold, that comes on. <laughs> <laughs> they're screaming to a non-projectionist because that doesn't happen anymore. Stop! And covering their kids' ears and eyes and, you know, <laughs> running out of the cinema. It is appalling. What a moron! Who would do that? <laughs> How traumatising! You might as well just shot Peter Rabbit in front of them. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so that's right. And people, people say, actors talk about, you know, when they do spooky films like this, that often weird things happen. 
So did that happen on this? Not on this one, but I mean, I have experienced something like that before. Oh, and what? Um, I did this film called The Sixth Sense, and never um... heard of it. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. We were shooting in Philadelphia. I kind of, it was the first time I got into yoga. I was meditating a lot. And this thing just kept happening night after night. I would wake up and the clock would say 11, 11 or 1, 1, 1. I have the same thing. You do not. It's mad, yeah. It feels, I mean, how do you interpret it? Um, I just get a new battery for this. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is quite strange, though. I mean, it happens so often, more so than I, I mean, more than anything else, but I mean, more than any other number. I mean, it's, it's bizarre. You don't get that? Have you had it, Joe? No. Is it? <laughs> what, what is it? So it's 11 minutes past one. It's, it's 11 it's minutes past 11, number. isn't it? Or it's 11 minutes past 11. 11, 11 or 111. Can you branch out into 333? Three, three? <laughs> um, <laughs> but for me, I always interpret it as like somehow I'm on the right track or, you know, some, you know, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a mystery. I don't understand it, but it feels somehow. Well, I think isn't there some sort of weird unconscious thing going on in your head? Because I can do a thing where I say to myself, I've got to wake up. At 6:32, and you wake up at 6:31. And I wake up at 6:32. Right. So I think your brain is actually much cleverer than you, you know, than Get we realise. Yeah, absolutely. But Joe Brandon, you have dabbled in the dark arts, have you not? I have. Yeah, you did. Was Ready it, tell. Yeah. Was it the Ouija board you did? It was a Ouija You did board. not. I did. Oh, I'm too scared to do that. Oh well, no, it's great. But <laughs> well, well, we were obviously, <laughs> and I um, <laughs> thought we'd have a go. And without any prompting at all, this glass that we all had our fingers on spelt out, "Knowledge is not free." Right. None of us were intelligent enough to have come up with that phrase. So, <laughs> thought, well, let's ask it, you know. So we asked, what price is knowledge? And it spelt out your life, and the glass shot off the table. I literally just got goosebumps. Oh. No, oh. I've, I've, I've never done it because... Because you've done it, haven't you, Ethan? I've you done it. Yeah, yeah, my... You're giving some power to this, and I'm, I'm liking that, because my sister and I were doing the Ouija board once I was about 12, and... Uh, my sister asked the Ouija board who I was in my past life. I was on the board. I mean, technically, my fingers were touching it, and it spelled out James Dean. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I might have affected it. I might have paid it. Uh, I'm not sure, but it felt real, man. It felt real. I one E and Dean. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, moving on, uh, Ethan Hawke's film is called First Reformed. Uh, it opens in UK cinemas on 13th of July, also playing at the London Sundance. And it, you, innocent, you play uh, a priest, and he's struggling. You? Yeah, he... I don't know why I find that funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he gives very good, and all, not just a priest, but a priest who's kind of struggling. He's mm -hmm. kind of a crisis of faith. That you understand. What are you struggling with, darling? Uh, crisis inside, faith issues. Yeah. yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's quite a it, it's a dark story, but it has an amazing, uh, uh, you know, Paul Schrader, taxi driver, raging bull, all those things. So presumably, it's a beautiful, serious portrait of a person struggling with where is the leadership today in regards to uh, the environment crisis. I play. I'm I'm counseling a young man who's struggling with his upset about bringing a child into the world because of the way the environment is. And I'm trying to counsel him in his faith. And slowly we... F there's a connection made between the two of us that challenges my faith and challenges my position. And it's, it's written by the same guy who wrote Taxi Driver, Paul Schrader. He's written and directed a lot of amazing movies. Uh, he's in his 70s now. And it's so clearly the same voice it sounds incredible. I can't well, wait to see we, that. Well, yeah. you can watch a bit now. Oh, come yeah. on. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is you struggling to find a, a Christian response to what's going on. Mm. <laughs> and that was uh, Cedric Hill's yeah. 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 It's, it's weird to he see He does him. a great job in the movie, yeah. Cedric, yeah. Yeah. And what's the story that you... Were you going to become a priest? You wanted to become a priest? No, 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 no. My, I was... How Very, did you get that so wrong, Graham? <laughs> <laughs> I was extremely outgoing as a kid, and my grandmother thought that the only appropriate use of that defective gene would be to be a priest. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I needed, so a, I needed a lot of attention. <laughs> oh, OK. Uh, and so uh, she thought best used on the pulpit, you know? Uh, but it didn't happen. <laughs> she used to tell me that, you know, just pray and, and the calling will come. 
So what exactly is the calling? Just be still and you'll hear the, the voice tell you if you're supposed to be a priest or not. And so I... What age were you when this happened? You know, eight or nine, you know. So I was never quiet. I did not want that voice to come. I just ran around and avoided it and found myself here on the Graham Norton show. Phew. <laughs> yeah. Dreams can come true. <laughs> and when people are starting out, I mean, they... You, you know, find their way into acting. They try lots of different things along the way. Uh, now, Aiden, your first love was the dance, I believe. How did you know? I'm from Ireland. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, well, it's, it was a bit of a secret. Uh, I, I, I used to be a ballroom dancer, yeah, yeah, for, for, for years. No, 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 not just a ballroom dancer. You represented your country. I did, yeah. yeah. <laughs> In what style did you do? Well, ballroom, so be waltz, tango, quick Oh, you did them all? Style. I did all of them, yeah. And wow. American as well. Cha-cha, rumba, jive. I gotta see no, some new, right. baby. Well, <laughs> Oh, you. We can see. Uh, this, I don't know how old Aiden is. This, you're not moving. This is just a picture. Now, earlier I thought you looked the same, but you don't really. Ah, yes. Look at uh, that. There you are. And yeah. I mean, those are some <laughs> plucked eyebrows there. Those are. <laughs> never plucked. There's a lot of L neck going on in the hair and fake tan, but uh, the eyebrows are all me. <gasps> Look how serious you are. It's a that... tango. It's a very serious dance. Yes. Oh Ooh. God, I'd be. Uh... In your teens. 15, yeah. 16 or something. Oh, so sweet. Why did you give it up? <laughs> um, why did I give it up? I, I don't know. I should have stuck at it, actually, shouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you have to be very good to, to go pro, and, and it's just it's too much discipline and all that. Yeah, learning lines is easy. Yeah, 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 yeah it's easy. Because <laughs> uh, now, uh, Ethan, you know, once you decided to be an actor, so your first big break of a movie loads of people love, Dead Poets Society. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> you're amazing. Um, and is this the movie your, your, your children have seen this film? Mm hmm My mother forced them to watch it, and about three-quarters of the way through, <laughs> my son said, so when do you come on, Dad? <laughs> and uh, you've been watching me for an hour and a half. <laughs> so are you. <laughs> it's just really... <laughs> it's heartbreaking, though, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the crooked teeth! Yeah! <laughs> it is weird, that, that first moment when your kids realise that you're on telly. I remember mine. What, when she's about three or four running in, going, Mom, Mom, you're on the telly. And I was like, oh, how sweet. Went in, telly tubbies. Thank you, thank you. And, of course, working with Robin Williams, everyone loves Robin Williams. You, I mean, you've worked uh, yeah, on The Night yeah, Listener, so, how yeah. lovely he is, and he's been mm -hmm. on here and everyone loved him. But your, your relationship with him on, on set sounded a, 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 a bit fractious. Well, he was incredibly funny. Right, and he was very relaxed and very inventive. And he would get up, and he was playing this teacher, and he would just improv constantly all day long. And the more the crew laughed, the more he encouraged. He was. Uh, yeah. He would go. And I was I really wanted to be a serious actor. You know, I really was. I had I had read Stanislavski, and I had what was supposed to be in my pockets. And I really, you know, really wanted to be in character. And I really didn't want to laugh. And so the, the, more, the more I didn't laugh, the more insane he got and would make fun and, oh, this one doesn't want to laugh, and the more smoke would come out of my ears. And, and I'm like, he didn't understand. I was trying to do a good job. You know, I want to be Montgomery Clift over here. You're trying to be Zero Mustel or something. And, 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 and uh, so I thought he hated me because he just constantly would lay into me. No sooner would action start than he would lay into Todd over here. That was my character's name. And... Uh, and then when the movie was over, I had to go back to school, and I got this call, and it was from a big Hollywood agent. You know, this guy says, I'm, I'm Robin Williams' agent, and he says that you're going to be somebody, and that I should sign you. And I was like, really? And I, uh, so he got me my first agent, who's still wow. my agent now. I and, love um, that story. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah. That's so lovely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, now, uh, Aidan Turner, ladies and gentlemen, is returning to the West End stage in the hugely anticipated revival of The Lieutenant Vinish Moore. And uh, British people watching, I'm not being an idiot, we say Lieutenant. We do in, in Ireland, yeah. I mean, it was yeah. something me and Martin and, and the rest of the cast uh, have to have, to have a, a chat about because um, I think it is Lieutenant over here, but yeah. in America and, and Ireland, Ireland. It's, it's Lieutenant. Yeah. Lieutenant. But Lieutenant, yeah. It I is. don't know what it is in Australia. It's like... Lieutenant. 
<laughs> that was appalling. <laughs> Just trying. <laughs> I that's an acting I success, thought it was really and now good. you know why. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the Lieutenant of Finnish War. The Lieutenant of Finnish War. It previews from the 23rd of June. Opens on July the 4th. So, uh, what do people uh, need to know about today? Uh, well, the play is set on the island of, of Finnish War, which is the the west coast of Ireland, and Belfast as well, and. The play, it is a comedy, but the, the play does open with me uh, in Belfast, my character Porrick, uh, he's a member of the INLA, which is a paramilitary organisation in Ireland, and he's, uh, he's torturing um, some poor lad who is selling drugs. And during that, he gets a phone call to return back to Inishmore because his, uh, his best friend in the world, uh, his cat, is sick. So he, yeah. so he returns to Inishmore where he, he catches up with the INLA guys who want to kill him. And so the, the cat in the poster, is that, does this cat appear... Because I just thought that was just to appeal to, you know... <laughs> oh, look at him with a cat. We both see that. <laughs> but, um, but so the, is that the cat that's in the play? It's... You know what? Yeah, it is, actually. Yeah, yeah, it is the cat that's in the play, yeah. I don't... Yeah, yeah, it is. Does the cat have to do stuff? The, the things happen to the cat, yeah. Things happen to the cat? Hey, listen, come and see the show. <laughs> If you want to see that cat, come early. <laughs> <laughs> but is it, you, but you, you have a hard time with cats. Well, I'm allergic to cats, but that photo shoot... <laughs> yeah, and I'm Michael, the director, Michael Grandish, doesn't know this, um, but that was a really tough day for the, for the photo shoot. I was welling up all the time. I'm, I'm uh, highly allergic to... It's OK, it's a cat. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so but it's Martin McDonough, so it's kind of... It's very funny, but it's quite... It That's is. There. It's really dark, but it's yeah, it's hilarious. I mean, Martin, you know, he's 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 got that talent for making um, violence just quite funny and absurd, and and he sort of you know he just has a has a knack for that, you know. And he just did three billboards, I think. Yeah. But it's directed by Michael Grandage. Yes. And you were saying that uh, Michael perhaps thought of you because of Poldark. Yeah. Well, Michael lives. He's he's from Cornwall, and obviously Poldark, the show I'm in, is is shot there, is set there. So yeah, and I don't know if you've been to to Cornwall, but I mean, I think my face is kind of everywhere, isn't it? It's, it's on mugs and it's on dishcloths. It's, <laughs> it's on a lot of things. So I just think I was in his psyche all the time, you know? <laughs> the meeting was quite random, you know? I don't know why he called me, but I just think I was there, you know? <laughs> he was just drying the dishes. I think so, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, you know, uh, obviously people love pulled up merchandise, but not everyone wants to buy it. Some people make their own. Okay. Now, where is uh, Angela? <laughs> Where's Angela? Oh, there's Angela. Now, that, where do you live, Angela? In Suffolk. In Suffolk. Okay. And Angela, oh, she loves to knit. Oh, <laughs> oh great. But she has gone. She has gone. Uh, <laughs> pull dark crazy. Uh, th that's you. It's me. That's you, Missy. <laughs> in the thing. Uh, okay, there's more. The love interest. Yeah, yeah, the love you love it, Malzah. Now, you might be looking at these and thinking, yeah, they're cute, but I'm not sure if they capture the raw sexual yeah. energy of Paul Dark. <laughs> oh, they do. That's good technique. <laughs> Did you not knit some grass and <laughs> So you've done it. You've done. I mean, you've done all, all the characters. They're all in here. This. So, do, do you just knit Poldark? No, I've got lots of others, but Poldark's my main one. Yes. <laughs> There's the dog from Poldark. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm told. I'm, oh yes. Uh, is that me? Yes. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got more hair than this. Is. <laughs> So, these must go back to the, the Poldark Knitting Museum, obviously. <laughs> uh, but you've knitted one that Aidan can have. Yes, I have. Oh, you have? Yes. Oh. Nice. Yes. <laughs> no, and, no, it's very special because apparently this is, this is from Series 4. This is your outfit from Series 4. How many series have there been? Uh, this, the fourth is coming out on, on yeah. the 10th of June. Yeah, oh, so this is yet to be seen. Yeah, this is, right. this is new. But they've started doing the trails, which look amazing. Right. And this is the... Isn't that right? I think so, yes. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't watch the show herself. Just <laughs> <laughs> find a book of patterns. <laughs> anyway, that's for you from Angela. Thank uh, you very much, Angela. Uh, there you go. <laughs> treasure, treasure. <laughs> that's 
And Aidan, tell me this, in the play, are there any older actors? Um, well, I mean, what do you mean, uh, older actors? Like, There's actors that are older than me. Yeah. What? No, it's just because... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ethan Hawke, you've had an extraordinary experience working with an older actor. I wondered if that's where you were going. Was this on, Broad was this on Broadway? <laughs> I, I was on Broadway once, yes, and I was doing a scene... This is unbelievable. G go. I was doing a scene with the great Richard Easton, a Canadian actor who actually was in the RSC for 25 years, and we were doing a scene where he's playing my father and I have to ask him for money, and he would get very angry and shout at me, and he would shout and shout and shout and shout, and one day we're doing it, and he was getting particularly mad and particularly heated, and he had a heart attack and fell down on center stage. And the audience, unlike you, thought it was absolutely hysterically Commitment. funny. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, they, I mean, he really hit the, oh. he hit like a watermelon hit, yeah, you know? Yeah. And I was absolutely terrified, because I was just, I'd done many plays with him, and I, I knew something was really ter wrong. terribly wrong. Oh, my God. And so it turns out he died. Now, yes, but the... Hang on, hang on, on hang on. on. <laughs> it just slipped off the tongue. No, it, the, there was a guy who did props on the show who was really good at CPR, and he came out, and he started working on it and doing CPR and bowling, and we had to say, is there a doctor in the house? And somebody came out, and the show stopped, and we called the ambulance, and the guys came, and they started his heart again. With the, I mean, oh, 11 God. minutes later or something. They what? had the 11, yeah. 11 minutes later? Uh, center stage, Broadway. Did the audience the, leave the theater? No, no nobody left. left. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they. And, um, oh, but my it, God, it that's was so intense. Let me tell you, it was incredibly intense, yes. all right? And I mean, we were all backstage praying. I mean, it was a. It was terrifying. Yeah. And did he it, come back to the play? Well, it was great. He, yes, he did. And uh, <laughs> um, not that night. Yeah, I was going to say. No. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. He, he, went, <laughs> he went to the hospital, clearly. <laughs> the show did not go on. Oh, um, the show stopped. And a couple days later, I got a call, because we were friends, and he wanted me to come. I came to his hospital room, and he ran lines with me, because he wanted me to go back to uh, the... Um, cast and the crew and everybody and show that he didn't have brain damage and he remembered all his lines and that right. his understudy better cool as jets because he was coming back <laughs> and uh, it was beautiful and then he did come back so my the best shows of my life was when he came back oh, that's incredible yeah, that's amazing yeah but it must be quite nerve-wracking in that scene every it night kind of like <laughs> <nerve -wracking. laughs> I can't you know, Don't get so angry <laughs> That's a lot. That's a lot of drama right there. Yeah, that is a lot of drama right there. So yeah, that, that might happen to you. And maybe. Yeah. Well, the guy you're torturing, you know, it yeah, might go sure. wrong. Sure. Does that's the, does the cat He's hanging upside down by his ankles. So I mean, because <laughs> yeah. you've done loads of stage, but presumably you nothing that. Oh happens. my lord, no, nothing like that. No, no way. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, no, I've, I've died, died on stage on. loads of times. <laughs> 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 what are you referring to? I'm referring to people not laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Wanting me dead. <laughs> yeah, that's happened loads. Uh, now, Joe Grant. <laughs> yes, Graham. Joe what? Grant is hitting the big screen in a film. This is this is no, this is something. <laughs> the film she wrote based on your own novel, The More You Ignore Me. It opens on July the sixth, and you must be so proud. I mean, this is an extraordinary achievement. I am. I'm really proud. You should I mean, be. I don't know if it's any good or not. It is! <laughs> well, I, I don't know, because I can't judge my own work at all. I just can't. And so, if other people say it's good, I'm happy to believe them. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm really proud. I can't believe it's actually happened. And, and tell us about the, the family at the centre of the story. OK, well, it's called The More You Ignore Me. It's set in the 1980s, and it's a rural... Uh, family. We filmed it actually just outside Blackpool in the winter and it was meant to be summer so we were all a bit cold. <laughs> um, but it's a fantastic place. And um, it's a family uh, in which the mother um, has mental health problems. Basically she has schizophrenia and the father has become her carer. Uh, they, have a, they have a young daughter and um, it's just really the story of how that family survives really. And, and the story, as you say it, it could play out in different ways. It could be a very bleak story, and there are bleak elements, but it seems like the, the characters are given permission to find the funny in, in this situation. Well, absolutely. I mean, I think the thing is, having been a psychiatric nurse for ten years, you cannot do that job without having a sense of humour. And it's an inclusive sense of humour. No-one I, I knew who was a nurse ever laughed at anybody 
we just kind of pull people in, you know. I mean, I remember, for example, I was looking after a really disturbed woman who, she was lovely, but she was like high as a kite. And I, I just, you didn't know what she's going to do next. So we were in the canteen, she had a plate full of roast dinner. And I said, just sit down and eat your dinner. And she got the plate and just went like that on top of my head. <laughs> And I had kind of gravy, roast potato <laughs> sprouts all coming down my face. So I said to her, what's for pudding? And, um, <laughs> she, you know, she laughed and we had a laugh about it. And I think that's kind of really, really important that you find the humour in it all, really. And there is a kind of, what I was saying to you backstage, there's a, a kind of a hopeful thing about it in that, you know, broken families, there's, there's odd ways they can be mended. Absolutely, and I think that's another thing people don't think about, you know, they don't think about, you know, someone who is maybe as ill as Sheridan Smith, who plays the main character in it, um, as her character, will ever find any kind of happiness, you know, but people fit together in weird ways, and that's what I wanted to show, really. I wanted to show how people rub along together and try and get what they want. And there's a lot of warmth about it, yeah. hopefully. Well, we've got a clip, and this is you uh, trying to talk down Gina, played brilliantly by Sheridan Smith. <laughs> uh, that's The More You Ignore Me. It opens on the 6th of July, and it's very much a lucky big show. Seriously, you deserve it. Thanks. Right, it's time for music. This man is a former member of Global Phenomenon in One Direction, <laughs> who's gone on to solo stardom with a string of hits to his name. Here performing familiar, it is Liam Payne. <laughs> Well done, sir. Come on over and welcome those dancers. Excellent. Oh, congratulations. Thank you, Thank you. 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 Thank Familiar, you can exactly. get it now. Oh, yes, thank you. Yes. And um, presumably there's an album. Yes. It's going to be out in September. It's kind of like a, uh, a very mixed bag uh, because you, when you find your feet throughout the music industry, you, you explore so many different types of music. And I wanted to go everywhere. One Direction never had a collaboration. I've got like six or seven different people on there, which is a bit like uh, a playlist. And obviously, I think that playlists are, you know, just as important as albums these days. So I wanted to make my album like a playlist. So. Okay. Now, weirdly, it is almost to the day a year since you were last on the show. I mean, I think you are most responsible for my success, to be honest. I like to think that, too. Think yeah. <laughs> it's not liable for any money in this show. Is it? Like, <laughs> no, no, no. Not legally binding. No, but this, this is incredible. So, in the last year, uh, Liam Payne's music, not One Direction tracks, Liam Payne's music, one billion streams <laughs> online. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, I'm blown away. Uh, but now, in the last year, not just uh, uh, loads of streams as well, uh, your little baby bear, baby bear is now, he's one, because he, he was just born the last time you were here. Yeah, I mean, it was a bit sad. I, I had a, a, a job that somebody booked in by accident on, the, on his birthday, which I was like, this is terrible. I got the news, I was like, oh, my goodness. This Bad is, dad. My chips are cooked right here. Yeah. But, you know, it actually made his birthday better in the end because we had the whole first day, she'd arranged a whole party, it was all bear-themed, we played around on, like, cars. I was sat at the kids' table, obviously, being, you know, much younger. <laughs> um, and, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Listen, the kids got better food. It was simple. We were eating sushi and posh stuff, and I was like, but he's got fish fingers. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? Yeah, and so we had a great time. And then in the morning, all my family was over. So he got, like, a whole thing of birthdays before I went, which was fantastic. It's something I'll never forget. And, you know, I hope he had the best time. It was his first time on a rocking horse, and he was absolutely buzzing. Oh. He was like, oh, I love this thing. Yeah, give me some more of that. It's nice. There. And it's so sweet, of course, because he won't remember any of it. <laughs> Can I just ask if you've got any dancing jobs going? It looks quite good fun, doesn't it? it? Does, they, do look, they were looking like they were having a great time. Yeah, they they're did. They're fantastic. They're, I mean, they're, they're amazing, and they yes. do most the most part of that. I just try and join in as best I can. Oh, have come you, on. Have you seen our man dance here? He's very good. <laughs> he danced in Ireland. He wants to... I can do some of that. Mine's called... I call oh, it yeah. movement. It's not actually dancing. <laughs> <laughs> and are, are the... Um, are the... the uh, your daughters, are they very jealous that you're here right now? My 17-year-old is. She will be seething watching that. <laughs> <laughs> what a waste. So can I click yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <Ooh. Ooh>. Hi, Maisie. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, good luck with it, and thanks for that performance. Thank uh, Liam Payne, everybody. <laughs>
Tonight, here we go. We took just time for a visit to the big red chair. But hold on a second, because I forgot to move this. Uh, <laughs> it's really technical. I'll just plug it in. Finished. OK. Um, so, who's there? Hello. Hi. Keen. Uh, what's your name? I'm Helen. Helen. And where are you from, Helen? I'm from New Zealand. <gasps> oh, home of the story. Home of the story. Uh, and are you travelling, working here? What's the story? Um, I've been living here for three years. Three years? Yeah. One beyond the visa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. I'll keep her talking. I'll keep her talking. <laughs> Come now. Uh, <laughs> uh, off you go with this story. Brilliant. Um, so I work in a hospital. I'm a radiographer. And um, so a guy comes into the emergency department and he tells the doctors that he was um, outside and he was gardening naked, as you do. Um, and he slipped and he fell yeah. on a sweet potato. <laughs> and, oh, a likely story. Um, unfortunately, now there's a sweet potato up his bum. <laughs> Um, so the doctors, they send him round to X-ray because they need to decide if there is actually a sweet potato up his bum or not, which, I like this classic which there was. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, so they obviously need to get it out. If it goes in one way, it can't come out the same way. So off he goes to theatre. Um, this is where there's a plot twist to his story. So um, the normal um, garden sweet potato was actually peeled. <laughs> He said he fell on it in the garden, but it wouldn't have been peeled if it was just in the ground. <laughs> oh, right, OK. Yeah. I like the way she specified what potato. <laughs> yeah. It was a sweet potato. It was a sweet potato, wasn't it? Sweet mashed potato. potato. It no. might have been mashed no. potato at the end of it, you never know. Mm. Let's not go into it. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been easier to get out, but anyway. <laughs> Should we have another story? Here we go. Harder to get in. Hello. Hello. Hi. What's your name? Yes, uh, Tom. Indeed. Tom. Lovely. And what do you do, Tom? Uh, I sell wood. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> is it is it chopped? Is it living? What? Uh, it whatever you want to do to it, you can chop it, plane it. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Any uh, type. Where do you do that? Uh, in Clapham, actually. Even okay. though I've got a Dudley accent, so I'm living down here now. Okay. Yeah. For all your wood needs in Clapham. Yeah. Go yeah. 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 to Clapham. He's your man. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, OK, off we go with this story. I've not always sold wood. I used to be a uh, holiday rep uh, in Ibiza. Uh, so I'm waiting at the airport one day and the Dublin flight comes through and a yeah, fellow's walking towards me, dragging his case in one hand and a portable TV on his shoulder. So, uh, OK, mate, um, the, the TV, can, can I ask what, what that's for? It's a bit of a strange thing to bring uh, on holiday. And he just looked at me and went, the game on Saturday. Uh, Gaelic football, it's, it's only on Irish TV. <laughs> Should we have one more? OK, one more. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Hello. Oh, here she comes. so nice. Oh, steady, steady, steady. Hello. Hello. Hi, what's your name? Susan. Susan. She Lovely. really looks like a Susan. <laughs> <laughs> don't you think? You don't agree? Uh, I was uh, I was playing uh, that game in my head like what's I was more struck game? by the her top is the same color as your top. Yeah. Oh we're coordinated with yes. earlier. It's Susan or Jackie, I would say. Susan or Jackie. Or Sue for sure. Hmm? You just got normal Sue. Or Sue or Sue. But anyway, <laughs> Susan is your name. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Where's she from, Tony Collette? <laughs> I'm not psychic. <laughs> okay. where, where are you from? I'm from um, a little village just out Stevenage in Hertfordshire. Oh, Stevenage. For a moment, she didn't know either. She's <laughs> 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 Stevenage. OK, off you go with this story. Um, years ago, I had a best friend uh, called Jackie uh, who had a... Oh, my goodness! <laughs> I love this game! It's awesome! <laughs> You're psychic! <laughs> this is all doing your film. It's all doing your film. <laughs> Sorry, Susan, we got distracted. We did. <laughs> your best friend Jackie. Your best friend Jackie. She had a boyfriend who had just got a brand new convertible car, and he he turned up at the house and uh, offered to take us, uh, me, Jackie, and my two children out for a little uh, trip around the village. So we got in the back. Me and me and my two uh, children got in the back. We drove around the village and stopped at the village shop. Um, we went and bought some ice creams and all got back into the car to drive home and uh, I looked down and my daughter Grace had dropped her ice cream down her leg. I was horrified because I thought that he was going to freak out because it was a brand new car. 
So I said to Grace, lick it off, lick it off. And she did. It turns out it wasn't ice cream, it was bird's poo. <laughs> Story. You can walk, Susan. <laughs> I love that story. Oh. If you'd like to join us on the show, have a go on that show. You can find that via our website at this very address. That is it for tonight. Please say a huge thank you to all of my guests. Liam Payne! <laughs> Joe Brand! with pop star Florence and the Machine, comedian Rob Bryden, actors B.T. Edmondson and Jennifer Saunders, Hollywood star Channing Tatum, and the sporting legend that is Usain Bolt. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>